friends, welcome to the first vlog of 2024. Looking at this, you're probably thinking, it's late at night. Like it's, you know, close to, close to bedtime. No, 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 it is 3.30 in the afternoon. We have storms, we have chaos. So I have sat on the couch to read and we're gonna be reading City of Fallen Angels. It feels like the right, mo right time to read a fantasy book. I'm in the mood. I really want to read back. I, I've this is a reread for me, so I want to get back into this world. And we're gonna read that's thunder, so we're gonna be here hanging out. Let's see how we go. This isn't a very short, very long book, so let's see how long it takes me to read. Obviously, as it is a reread, but I will be annotating this as I go along. Gosh, the swans are going nuts! What is happening? The swannies were out there doing something, I don't know where he went. He must be tucked behind over there. But there's the baby swannies, poor babies in this rain. Okay, it is now. It is Wednesday, so last night I ended up reading just sort of 300 pages of City of Fallen Angels. I read till page 292. I really, really thoroughly enjoy this series. They're very fun. Um, and it really shows me like, I really enjoy, I actually really enjoy third person narration, particularly something that is YA because it just means that you're not stuck in like a teenager's head constantly. So I like third person. I know some people don't, but sometimes I find internal monologue really annoying and it's a bit of a letdown for me in a book. So I love this, highly recommend obviously this series, but um, I will probably finish this later on tonight. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and read like a fantasy book a week because um, there's a couple on my radar. I have three on my TBR for this month. So we'll see. Um, speaking of fantasy, I am also going to be trying to read more fan fiction because I am now a simp for Germani fan fiction. So I ended up finishing The Holiday by Embers uh, of April. I think that's that's the author's name. This is a like Germani and Harry and Theo holiday like the movie the holiday retelling i love the holiday it's one of my favorite movies i'll probably watch it now while i'm editing it is so sweet so wholesome so cute it is only like 130 something pages it is short it is sweet it packs a punch um draco malfoy is a single daddy if you don't know anything about the holiday uh, uh jude law his character is a single daddy in the holiday. I loved it. I gave it a five stars. It is fantastic. Obviously don't expect anything too, too wild, but if you do love the holiday, you'll probably love it. But there is some really decent spice in it. Like it's very, very minimal. There's one spicy scene. There's one sort of like finger bang and then there's one like fully fledged like scene. Um, most of it's laid to back, flayed, flayed, fade to black, but I love it. And I think it's great. Literally right after I put that down, I started Big Nick Energy on my Kindle. I knew it 5% before I fell asleep, but I'm enjoying it so far. Very curious to see how the story goes. I've heard some really mixed reviews. Some people were giving it two stars. Some people were like, it's a five star read. Don't know. And I'm, I'm going into it with an open mind. I think I'm gonna really enjoy it. I love Single Daddy Cowboy, so no complaints. This morning at the gym, I started Fragile Hearts by Amber Kelly on audio. Now I listen to my audiobooks between three and 3.5 speed, which I know is crazy, but my brain works. Arguably if I'm missing something, it probably wasn't that important to begin with. But this is, I don't even know what you would call the tropes, but I guess potentially like a workplace romance. This is the fourth book. I skipped the third one because there is a TikToker named Ashley who read it and the third book and gave it like a two something stars didn't like it so i'm like well if she doesn't like it well i'm gonna go i'm just gonna skip it i feel like i don't need to read their romance so i went straight to the third one the fourth one sorry um but this is the younger sister of the mmc in the second book which is stone hearts which i loved stone hearts i thought it was fantastic and the new vet in town and he um has a really tragic backstory and now She's like working with him and she's really attracted to him. It's very cute, very sweet. Not like these are very, very low stakes books. I would call them sort of low angst, potentially slightly insta lovey, but they are like the insta loveyness does take a while to sort of get there. Maybe definitely like there is an instant attraction and they built on the attraction and build like an emotional connection, which is why I think the insta lovey trope isn't annoying me as much. I really just don't have too much complaints about it like very easy digestible reads um to just listen i listened obviously to a good chunk of it while i was at the gym i listened to 
I think as a whole, I think the audiobook is like an hour and 40 minutes. So I listened to an hour while at the gym. So that was most just like half an hour of weight training, half an hour on the treadmill. So I listened to an hour of that. And then I listened to like a little bit more while I was grocery shopping and just making breakfast just then and cleaning up and all the kind of morning chores that I do. So I have 25 minutes left. The first two was sort of suspenseful. So I'm assuming that there's going to be a suspense element coming. Don't know what that's going to look like, but we'll see. But yeah, um, so for the rest of the week, I'll be seeing what audiobooks I pick up every now and again. And I think if people like want to increase their, like the number of books that they read and they're trying to consume more stories, I would really just recommend audiobooks because you literally can listen at any point in the day. Um, like I listen to the gym, which simply that's kind of weird. I don't really care. I'm really not a music person at the moment. I don't listen to like the current hits. I don't, I need to like really work on my gym playlist. I don't really have one that I love, but yeah. So I'm going to keep going with this. That's sort of, that's sort of how I would fill it in and like cooking, doing the dishes, like all the small things that I do around the house during the day. I'll just listen to an audiobook while I do it. So yeah, I need to do some editing now. Okay, it's a couple hours later. I've done some work. I have done some of that life admin. I ended up finishing Fragile Hearts and I think I'm going to give it about a four star. It was enjoyable. I like the ending. It was probably a little bit lackluster. It's somewhere between a little bit, about a 3.5 and a four. We'll see how I feel when I do do my review. But I have started The House Made by Freddie McFadden which is so, so popular. I'm unsure how to feel about it at this stage. How far am I into it? I'm like just short of halfway and I'm like addicted. I just want to know what's going to happen. I don't know. I kind of have theories. It's feeling very similar to The Last Mrs. Parish at this stage, but who knows what can happen? I know not to, to I know to expect the unexpected with Freddie McFadden. So I'll update you guys when I'm at, back at that. Um, I'm gonna go eat some lunch now. I do need to do some filming and then some editing. So I'll hopefully get a little bit more of this in and finish it soon because I'm like really addicted. I just finished filming a video and I would, while I was preparing for that, I finished re listening to The Housemaid by Freddie McFadden and I really enjoyed it. It went in a way that I was sort of expecting, but then the ending was a way that I wasn't expecting. So I think it's gonna get a four, 4.5 stars. It is very, very similar to the last Mrs. Parrish by, uh, I can't even remember the author name, but very similar, but better. I don't like the way that the last Mrs. Parrish ends because it feels very like let's hate on women. Whereas this is the complete opposite. And it's so good. Like both the women involved in this are like, you support women's wrongs. That's how this is. I, it's, I don't want to give away obviously because it is a thriller, but I love this. I can see where the series is going and I can understand why people wanted more and why she is writing more. I am definitely going to be listening to The Housemaid's Secret next, in the next, you know, couple weeks. I'm really excited to see where this goes because I, like, I can see where, like, I can see where this is going and I'm really going to enjoy it. Like, it's going to be, it's going to be great. I think I'm going to start my next audio. I've listened to a lot of audiobooks today. This is the second audiobook that I finished today. This is why I read 275 books last year because like there'll be days and I'm like doing jobs around the house and I end up getting through like two or three audiobooks, especially if I'm picking up short ones. And because I listen to them so fast, I get through them so quick, which I know is like wild and ridiculous, but what can I say? So I think I'm gonna pick up Puck Shy by Lauren Blakely because I am reading, I'm, because the third book comes out this month, I think in a, like a week or so. So I'm gonna listen to that. That is a why choose hockey romance, adult hockey. And it follows one of the friends from the previous book, I believe, or the sister. I think this one might be about the sister. Let's see how we go. Guys, the audiobook has Teddy Hamilton and Jacob Morgan. I am dead. I love both of them as narrators. Can't wait. Okay, so the last time I spoke to you guys, I was listening to Puck Yes by Lauren Blakely. I finished that. I'm giving it a three stars. I did enjoy it, but I was mainly involved, like enjoyed the spice. Um, I really enjoyed the narration and the plot was non-existent. I found like the relationship was less like insta-lovey, which was nice. Um, it just wasn't my favorite book that I've ever read. I think with these things, like with this, with this series, the FMC is always a like book obsessed, which is kind of like, it kind of takes me out of the story a little bit, but I am going to start Bad Alpha by Catherine Moon on audio now. I'm about to finish cleaning the house and then I'm gonna do some ironing and cleaning up as well. So that'll take me some time. Eventually I'll have to have a shower, wash my hair, so that'll be more listening time. And I don't even know what else. I have to go to the shops. There's just like so much to do. I haven't been able to sit down and 
read more of City of Fallen Angels in a little while. I don't have much left um, and I still need to read Big Nick Energy. We will see how we go. I'm gonna finish cleaning up because it is now quarter to 12. I'm just gonna like, I'm literally up to vacuuming. I'll put the chairs up, vacuum, and then I'll start ironing. I entirely dropped off the face of the earth. I'm sorry. I am reading The Steel King, which is the first book of my 24 in 2024. Loving it. Um, it's 33, 31% of the way through and they're already bonking. I'm into it. This is an MC romance, romantic suspense. Someone's turned up dead. And now I from C. Bryce is having to investigate it. And it is the person suspected of killing this person is the MMC's dad. Sure. Let's see how we go. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I love anything Debbie Perry puts out. Literally, I have only read one bad book by her. I also finished today on audio um, Local Woman Missing, and it's been on my TBR for a little while. And I think I'm gonna give it a 4.5. I enjoyed it. Twisty turning. I was completely blindsided by the twist. I honestly did not expect that at all. I, like, I didn't want to stop reading it. Like I could not put it down. Like I could not stop listening to the audiobook. I just wanted to like keep doing what I was doing so I could keep listening. I did finish Big Nick Energy. Um, I'm giving that a four star. It was good. Not as spicy as I thought it was going to be. Only one rope scene, but it was good. I just think, I don't know. I don't know what I think. I was just kind of like, I don't know why these two resisted each other for so I don't know why she resisted him for so long. She should have probably given in a little bit earlier, but and also understand why. So I'm gonna get back to the smutty scene that I just stopped and update you guys later. Hey friends, it's been a little while since I vlogged. Um, it is a miserable day here. Um, so I am back in bed. I'm just in like a really casual comfy dress. Um, I need to finish this arc that I was sending to write my review today. Um, so this is One Night to Win You by Julia Jarrett. It's a small time romance. It is the last book in the series. It is not a really long book. I have like 200 pages to read, which isn't a lot. I need to finish it. I need to write my review. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time reading this now and drinking my coffee. So that's what I'm going to do. I have new shop skills on my Kindle, which is so exciting. Um, these are the sage green color, which has now been made permanent. You are in the market for strap skills. I will leave my link and my discount code if you want to purchase a set of strap skills. I also have cases now for the paper whites, not for the Oasis, but I love my Oasis. So I just suffer. But it's fine. I only have 40%, 14% of battery on my Oasis. So I need to charge that today as well. So I'll probably leave, read until this dies. This is a um, single mum second chance. Like they had a one night stand and now they're reunited in his small town. And I think it's going to be like a second chance of like him getting her back and stuff. Because yeah, it was supposed to be just one night. And he's a sexy firefighter. Okay, so it's a little while later. I think I might get tension. I've got the window open. But... I am going to go back into Ace My Heart by Lila Pine. This is a murder mystery like tennis novella and it is currently tennis season, obviously. Um, the Oz Open is on, so I'm gonna read that. Um, I'm gonna go get changed quickly and then listen to that while I edit a vlog because it needs to be done. Okay, friends, I have started Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. I adore this book with every fiber of my friggin' being. This is one of the most wholesome, sweet books I've ever read in my life. I loved Next of Kin. I thought it was fantastic. I know some people didn't love it, but I freaking loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. You cannot fault this. It is so great, so sweet. Uh, if you've never heard about Art and a Limb, uh, it follows Wynn and Bo, and they have a one night stand and when ends up pregnant and she decides to keep the baby because she just always thought she always wanted to be a mom and you know she never knew she'd have the opportunity so she's like I'm gonna do it and Bo so and she never thought she would be a good mom because she has an underdeveloped head. Bo also has a difference in limbs and he has an amputated leg because he had bone cancer. He thought that he would never be able to have children because of his cancer so he goes ahead and like is going to go through with have being a dad as well and wants to be super involved. Neither at the moment, they're 30 percent of the way through it. They are not pursuing a romantic relationship at the moment, but they are so good as friends. They, you know, their main focus is to be good co-parents and I'm obsessed. If you don't like accidental pregnancy, I totally recommend checking this one out because it is really just that good. Um, I read a review and it was like, oh, there's no way that this chick would have gotten pregnant when she was like 100% taking her birth control effectively, which is 100% incorrect. There is, I have marked it, um, where the best friend, Wynn's best friend, 
says says I know that I know I've seen you not take your pill because your phone dies at night. She was not taking her pill 110% correctly. So I am going to put this down for a second and I'm going to start Finn Rhodes Forever. Cannot wait. This is a second chance romance. I am a recent lover of second chance romance. I think my favorite tropes have really changed. I really thought they were fake dating, marriage of convenience and brother's best friend. I would still say brother's best friend, like one of my favorites and marriage of convenience, but I do adore second chance and I'm really into like accidental pregnancies at the moment. I read a couple and a few of them have been five stars, which is kind of crazy. I recently read One Night by Lena Hendricks, gave it five stars. I adored it with every fiber of my being. I thought it was fantastic. I'm gonna listen to this. I'm gonna go get ready though. I need to put my skincare on. I'm waiting for the Ticketek Marketplace lounge to load. Um, my life has been consumed by Taylor Swift. So yeah, I'm gonna start Finn Rhodes. Uh, second chance, like I said. Don't know a lot about it. I know that it's, this is the last book in the Queen's Cove series. Two of my favorite narrators in already, I should say, Aaron Shedlock and Stella Hunter. I really enjoy their narrations. All right, update quickly before I have to cook dinner. But I am, I am. I haven't read any more of Art and a Limb, but I will be tonight because I am obsessed. But I have read, I have read. I didn't read a lot. I've only, an hour, only an hour and a half into the audiobook. I read next to nothing. That's a lie. Um, because I had to edit a talking video, so I couldn't listen. Because when I'm editing a talking video, I'm listening to myself talk. I can't listen to something else. Like a book. I can like watch a TV show in the background, but I can't listen to an audiobook. I don't know, it's weird. She is, Liv is trying to make Finn not like her anymore because she's like the only way he's gonna stop pursuing me is if I show him that like I'm the worst person in the world and then he so that he can move on so it's like hell is guy in 10 days which is like my favorite movie of all time okay it's been a couple days since I've updated um I'm up to chapter 24 of come on of out on the limb I'm obsessed this book is a six star this book belongs on like the same level as the right move of like my six star books and the books I will recommend for the rest of my life. This book is beautifully written. Bo is like top tier book boyfriend. Uh, there is so much depth. There's so much just like beauty to these characters. It just feels so natural and authentic and real. And I just, there's no, like there's no angst. Like there's angst, but there's no angst. There's no unnecessary drama. There's just love there's great side characters there's just beautiful conversations it's perfection like i said this belongs on the same category as the right move um, if you love the right move i would recommend reading this um obviously this is accidental pregnancy so if you don't like accidental pregnancy obviously don't pick this up because it won't be for you but that being said this has converted a lot of people to accidental pregnancy so if you're skeptical maybe on the fence try it i will read from her for the rest of my life she is amazing that she writes romance in such amazing ways they are just so well thought out there's so much representation without it feeling like forced and like trying to tick a box. I'm obsessed with this book. I will think about this book for the rest of my life. Let's see, I'm gonna keep reading this. I probably don't have a lot left. I might have a shower soon. I'm feeling a little bit tired. Um, it is only early, it is like 10 past eight. So I had a late night and an early morning. So, and I did lots of driving today, so. <laughs> Yay for me. I also had my hair done today. So that's why my hair's looking fresh as fresh to death. I'm gonna be chopping my hair off after my wedding and I'm so excited. And I also listened today on audiobook while I was driving um, Rumors and Romance. I am almost finished. I have like half an hour left of this audiobook. I will probably finish it tonight. I feel like I'm always vlogging in this spot, but I'm just always editing. Anyway, I started this before while I was cleaning on audio. Uh, this is Forever After All by Katharina Mora. This is a marriage of convenience, best friend's brother, but it's male best friend's older brother. Really enjoying it. This is really my favorite Katharina Mora so far. I'm like this far into it, so I'm like halfway. I'm up to page 146 of like 320. So I'm enjoying it so far. No critiques. Um, it's followed Alexander Kennedy um, and Elena Russo. Um, uses up all her inheritance, trying to keep her mum on life support and looked after after she has an accident. She's been disowned by her, her dad and her brother. Her brother is marrying Alexander's ex-girlfriend, ex-fiance, and now they're trying to get back at them. 
she's saying she's never gonna date you, like never be with him properly, just physically. Spice is delivering. I'd probably give this an easy four stars, I think, in the end, because I'm really, really enjoying it. I'll probably finish this audiobook in the next hour and a half, fingers crossed. Um, I get it done before we have to leave. Um, 